you have friends, but they don't like board games or are just okay into them, well, here are games that they will love. So in this video, we're going to pick top games that are best with non-gamers or as hobbyists say, gateway games. Yes, and we're gonna do it in a very unique way. We're gonna draft them. And that means that each of us is gonna have a pick in six different categories. And whenever a game is picked, it can never be picked again. Ever. Or at least in this draft. Yeah. So here we go, right? Yeah. First category is it plays in 20 minutes or less. Because if it's short, at least it's over soon. So my game for the quick one in 20 minutes or less is No Thanks. It's a very simple game. You just open a card in the middle of the table and you don't want to get it. So when it's your turn, you either take the card, which is bad, or you put up a chip and pass. But eventually, you're either going to run out of chips or there are going to be so many chips that you just want to grab that card. It comes down to that. You either pass or you take the card. Very simple. Plays in 20 minutes or less. I have a really good experience with this one. Oh, you've played really, Yeah, I played it. And it really surprised me how simple it is and how good it is. My first pick in this category is Love Letter. Basically, you want to be the last one standing in this game, meaning you will try to play cards to cancel out other players' abilities or just I play a card and then Giannis is out of the yeah, game. So eliminated I from win. the run. Yeah. I think one minus of this game is that cover and the name Love Letter, the theme, but nonetheless, it's a good game. Yeah, it's a very confrontational game for an game with such a name. I think it's a perfect gateway game for everybody who's starting yeah, out the hobby. Definitely. So the next category is best co-op game. Something you can play together and if somebody loses, you all lose. That makes you feel better and non-gamers especially. My pick for the second ca category, which is the co-op category, is Mysterium. That's, that's a heavy game. You think non-gamers can take it? <laughs> Physically, it's a heavy game. The idea of the game is that one of you is a ghost and he can't talk the whole game. But he is the only one who knows the correct answer. So the ghost uh, only talks with these cards and the rest of you have to uh, solve a mystery, a murder mystery and get the right answer at the end. You all work in teams and that's why I think co-op games are actually really good as a gateway games because it doesn't matter if somebody's a bigger gamer or has played it more, everybody's in the same boat and work together. It shows a very different gaming world than a lot of other, you know, like for example Euro games and that's why I like it and it's beautiful. I really like yeah. how it looks. My pick for the best co-op game is better than Jan's best co-op game. It just won. This is a localized version, but the name of the game is just one. The game is even simpler than his simple game. So how it works is one player is the guesser. Everybody else sees a word that he needs to guess and they have to write down one clue. And then when he's ready, you turn over the clues and judging by those clues, he has to guess the word. But the trick is if more than one person writes down the same clue, they have to erase it. So you have to be very not obvious, but obvious with the clues. So you don't think what everyone else thinks. And that's it. And he gets one guess. And if he guesses correctly, you score a point. If you don't, you lose a point. I've played it with kids and I've played with grandparents and it works perfectly. And it's also a fairly quick game. This is actually a good game. I agree with you. I don't agree that it's better than mine. Mine is more uh, colorful. It also would work with the quick game, right? With the yeah, it actually would fit well. the first category as well. Yeah. I somehow always forget that this is actually a co-op game. And I think, oh, it's a nice party game. And it's actually a co-op party game. Yeah. If you're looking for simple, simple co-op game, then this is yeah, the yeah. way to go. So if you had to pick just one, you know. <laughs> then you pick Mysterium. Yeah, just one. Um, yeah, honestly, we're filming a video. Oh, right. I'm just subscribing to Board Game Hangover. You haven't done that yet? Exactly. We're doing a lot of good board gaming stuff with tips and tricks and tops and whatever you can think of. Yeah, so... N d b uh, exactly. <laughs> Just do it. Next category is a game that you have converted most people into the hobby. So they played it with you and they're like, ah, this is awesome. I need to get this. And then six months later you meet them and they have all the games you have and more and they don't invite you to play and... <sighs> It's just somebody told me this story. It's, it's going to be okay. My number one game is Settlers of Catan or just Catan. Well, to be honest, I don't play it as much as I used to. But when I started out in this hobby, Friday night, I would just run home from the job, 
and play Settlers multiple times in a row. And my friends who were non-gamers played this. They got the game and they got an expansion and you know the rest of the story. If you don't know what Settlers of Catan is, you owe it to yourself to get this and try it. But it's basically a very simple economic game. You build roads, you build cities, you build villages, and they bring in resources which you can use to build more roads, cities, and uh, villages that give you points. And first one to get 10 points wins. It looks complex and in a big box, but it isn't. Settlers of Catan is definitely the one game that I have gotten most people into the hobby than with any other game. I would actually agree and say that you kind of in one sense won this like <laughs> category yes. for sure yes katan converts a lot of a lot of players me as well i think this was a first game like serious game i played as well why you lose this category is because it's obvious <laughs> it's yeah. obvious because it works right uh, yeah it's too good for its own fault but when's the last time you played it i recently made a video about it check it out not that long ago but in generally, yes, I don't play it even close as often as I started to play it, but it's okay. Uh, how often do you play one game over and over and over and over and over and over and over? Do you know a game called Elder Shore? I know it very well. Yeah, but this is, <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this is a really good pick. Um, thank, sure. thank you. Thank you. So yeah. he said I won this category, so thank you. No need to see yours. If you want to be boring, you pick Katan. I'm not going to be boring. I'm going to take... The mine. No, we're done with the co-op ones. I'm sorry. Disqualified. <clears throat> yes, this is also a co-op game and it also converted the most players for me because it gives so much emotions in such a little time. I played it with non-gamers and they played it for like six hours straight in a party non-stop and they bought it afterwards and are still playing it. It's perfect as a gateway game for players who are not into this hobby at all. This game is all about playing the cards in correct order. Everybody has their own cards, but nobody knows what you have. And you have to work together in a team to lay it down in a ascending order. Another thing is in this game, you can't talk between yourselves. So you can't go, oh, I have a five and you know, anybody has lower? No, then I'll play five, it'd be too easy. But you can play anytime you want. You wanna go now, go. You wanna wait, wait. But if you wait too long, somebody might play a lower hand card and you lose a life. It's very different from any other games. Again, one reason why I think it converts so many people, it's just something they haven't ever like witnessed or uh, played. So it's different. And that's why I would recommend it as a converter game, as a gateway game uh, to start this hobby. Even between simple games, there are the simplest games. So these are our picks for the simplest rules in this draft. I kind of twisted the category a bit. Of course he did. It doesn't matter how simple or hard the rules are if somebody helps you through the whole process. And that's why I chose Chronicles of Crime. Do you understand that we're doing non-gamer games right now? I don't find it as a big gamer game. It's not, of course, as simple as uh, No Thanks. It's simple because you have a mobile phone and basically you don't have any rules. You just look at your phone and it says what you can do, what you can do, you scan QR codes and do it. Yeah, you can't play it without reading the rules at sure. all. So this game employs a thing that more and more games do, a tutorial. Basically, you start playing while learning and you learn while playing. So in this game, you all are detectives and you're investigating cases. You can go to certain locations or interview certain people. And each of those locations or people have a QR code that, for example, if you want to go to the victim's house, you scan the code, you're there. And then it tells you what you see there, what you can do there. Yeah, and it's also a co-op game. So another thing why it's a good gateway game. If you play like a Euro game or deck building games, you have to have a strategy. You have to think about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. But this is experience that you live through and it's good because of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Since Giannis is all about cheating, let me just try it out as well. I'm going to pick a category. I think somebody tried calling it card line. How card line works is you basically have some cards in front of you in a line and you draw a card and now you have to add it to a correct position in that line. For example, in the game timeline, you have different certain historical events that you have to arrange in uh, ascending chronological order. So for example, if you draw a card of World War II, you have to figure out, does it go before the landing on the moon or after the landing on the moon? And then you turn it over and see if you were correct because there are years on the other side. So it's basically just arranging the cards. And then there's the illusion game that is basically the same thing, but you have colors and each of the cards has a certain amount of color present. For example, in this card, does it have more yellow or more green? 
It's very close, but you have to figure out. So we put them in a line with the more green and more green and more green. But essentially it's the same basic mechanic. And this actually is also a very fairly quick game. It takes around 20 minutes maximum to play. I don't know about illusion, so maybe it's it, it looks a bit different, but for me, I find it not boring, but there's no big excitement there. Well, it is what Yanis says, it's just one mechanic, it's just take a card and put it in a line. That's why it's simple. But sure, if you're looking for variety, there's not a lot of it here. But I also don't play it with my family as much at home, but when somebody comes visiting, or I have to grab a game to take with me that I know is pretty simple and we can play it anywhere I want, it's going to be one of these. A good thing also about Timeline, it has really uh, different themes, right? Yeah. So it's history, it's invention, so you can just have to find the right... And my friends, the most hated one, music and cinema, mm. because they somehow don't care which came out first, Alien or uh, Star Wars. I mean, how could you not care? Do you know? No, not at all. Wow. Next category is the coolest looking. If somebody passes you by while you're setting up a game or sees it on a shelf and is like, what is this? He kind of already wants to try it out. My pick for this category is Wasabi. If I had to describe it in one sentence, Uno, the dice game. I guess it's something about the dice. I mean, who doesn't like dice and who doesn't like custom dice right if you see some unique dice you're like wow this looks really cool and then there are these colorful cards with these sumo fighters so how this works is you just have to get rid of your dice and on your turn you roll all your dice and then those dice either let you draw cards or play cards or just pass the dice to somebody else theoretically you can win on the first roll if you roll all the symbols with passing the dice you win. The cards make people skip turns, so you can see the resemblance with Uno, right? Just, you know, getting rid of your dice and different kind of cards that mess up other players' turns. But somehow when this is set up and people are rolling dice and playing cards, that combination, people just stop and look at it. I have a similar pick, King of Tokyo, which is even more colorful. It is, that's true. It's a bit more difficult than this one. But not by much, but yeah. not by much, but yeah, a, a bit more. And the game is also similar. You have a lot of dice, you just roll them and you can in your turn use them. Yeah, you get points, get... you can attack other players. Yeah, it's, it's not the same game. <laughs> it's just about huge monsters and you fighting for the control of Tokyo. Yeah, and the first one to either get 20 points or the last one to be alive wins. Yeah, when it's on your shelf, it for sure stands out yeah. from the rest of them. For the last category is the best game to play in large groups. Yes, party games, even though other games would qualify for some of those as well, but just exactly for large groups. And Giannis, you get the first pick? I'll go. Yeah, he'll just it. go get his pick. <laughs> Don't get got. Don't get got. I've tested it like six times with six different like large large groups and everybody loved it it's a game that will make you a bit awkward <laughs> feel a bit awkward but it's great the idea is that each of you gets a wallet with tasks i think it's six tasks and whoever is the first to finish these tasks uh, will win the game and it's for example get a player to make an animal noise all of these tasks are about you making other players do something. And it's something that you play like the whole evening. And it's like a passive game. You don't actively think about it. Either you make the other person do that thing and you nail it. Or uh, the you while doing so, the other person just asks you... Is that a task from the game? Yes, and then you have to truthfully an uh, answer, yes, it's a task. And, and then, then you, you fail. fail it. And if you have failed three tasks, I think it's three, you're out of the game. I remember two times, especially when we played it. One was in a party, so everybody, you know, was lightheaded and had a bunch of fun. But the other one when we played it was at work. We actually, I played it with my coworkers and we played it in the length of like a whole week. And it was a great thing. It really helped to build like the team chemistry. And even for me, I'm a bit, you know, an introvert. At first I thought I'm not gonna like this game. You know, you have to do stuff with people and uh, it's actually good. And even for me, it was a challenge uh, and I really appreciated, you know, playing this game. It's fun. It's something in the background that is always yeah. there and it makes you like, why is he asking me this? Yeah. Is that a task? Okay, so my pick for the best with large amounts of people is this. I'm just... Uh... <laughs> You're out. <laughs> no, 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 stay, stay. All right. So the name of the game is Eat Poop, You Cat. Have you heard of it? I, I have now. <laughs> yes, 
stay, don't. It's not what it sounds like. It's also something along the lines of don't get got, because it's more of an activity than a game. In this game, actually, there is no winner. Well, the winner is everybody who participates because we're having so much fun. But how it works is each player gets a page and a pen or a pencil, and you write down a sentence. The longer the sentence, the more fun it's going to be. And then when you get the sentence, you pass it to the other player. Then you get the sentence, you fold the sentence away, and then you have to draw the sentence. And then you pass it again. And then the player gets the drawing. He's like, well, it definitely looks like filming a news episode. And then he folds the drawing and passes it on. And then it just molds it to something else entirely. And the game ends when you usually get your page back or after a certain amount of rounds. So it's actually best with seven or more people. And afterwards, you just show everybody your sheets and you're like, what, how did this become this? And that's why the name of the game, Eat Poop You Cat, somebody, you know, draw a cat eating, I think, sausages? We'll have to check that. And somebody wrote down afterward, Eat Poop You Cat. The best part is just yeah, yeah, opening, opening up it like up that. and just trying to see yeah, how it what's changed, the connection. Yeah. So not a really a game per se, but definitely a fun activity in parties. All right, and that is it with our draft. Comment if you liked it or not. Subscribe, obviously. And let us know if you want to see something similar in the future, because we can definitely put another list together. And maybe if you want to see specific categories, what we need to put on this draft, just write them down. Thank you for watching.